and five minute warning goes out. We're going to have to hustle to get all these guys in. There's close to 50 cars starting this one on pole. Patrick Long car 68 Manhattan Beach, 68 Porsche 911 T slash R. 37 starts second. Michael Malone, Seattle, Washington, 65 Lotus 26 R. Inside second row, 185, Dalmo de Vasconcelos from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, a 65 Lotus Elan. And beside him, 162, Patrick Byrne, Spokane, Washington, 1965, Alfa Romeo, GTA Corsa. Fifth starter car, 199, Dennis Kazmorowski, Clifton, New Jersey, 64, Janetta G4, alongside Kevin Shirley in car, 711, Sonoma, California, 62, Turner, Mark II, 1600. Starting seventh, Robert Davis, uh, San, San Francisco, number 117, and he Lotus. Lotus 7, and beside him 26, Francisco La Resende from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and 1967, Alfa Romeo Julius Sprint GTA. Patrick Long's car on the pole, that white Porsche 1968 911 TR. This is one of only 28 factory 911 TR models ordered from the factory with all competition equipment. Ran with the 69 Daytona 24 hour, finishing second in the GT class. The 75 Daytona 24, first in GTU. 79 Sebring 12 hour, first in GTU. And race cars since new with an amazing U.S. race history. Coming around turn 11 now, up the start for the straight. Looking for that green flag. Tightly bunched, good groupie, holding that face down. The front row holds the face down, lets everybody to get bunched up nice. Green flag comes out. And Long in the Porsche with a good jump on the start. Yeah, but both of the Alans are right with him. It looks like Dalmo de Vasconcellos got around Fern at the start and moved himself up in the third spot just as they crossed the start finish line. Yeah, so the Alpha's fourth, now the Alpha's fifth. It looked like uh, that Turner got around him too, and the Alpha dropped the fifth spot as that Turner, driven by Shirley, car 711, that's the Mark II 160, moves up into the fourth spot. Back, back to Denny. Burn comes back around and gets him. And turns right on him and looking on the inside. See, these guys are going to go at it. Burn holds the line, goes through four, and goes through five up the hill. So, Kazmorowski trying to make a move going up the hill to see if he can click off a couple of cars before they get up into six. Has to tuck in behind Kevin Shirley and that Turner. Boy, lots of position changes, and we're only halfway through lap one. <laughs> exactly. Well, you indicated there'd be good racing all the way through the field. We're talking about all this action taking place in about the top seven or eight. Oh, that is number nine. That is the Hufflepuff MGB. Beautifully prepared car. Whatever it did. That's Scott Brown. So he woke it up. So whatever it did. Boy, look at that battle between the two Lotuses. Malone and the oh. Vasconcellos. Oh. Saw the puff of smoke out of the back of Long's car. What was that? I think he locked up his right front tire. That's that Lotus battle I was talking oh, about. Oh yeah, this is going to be a real head back. Those are in the yeah. What may happen is those two are going to be winding each other so up so much that they will catch long because basically, you know, all they can see is each other. Well, usually what happens when you've got two cars fighting for a position, the car in front will, so the car in front of them, in front of that battle, has a tendency to pull away because when two cars are fighting that closely, there is some defensive driving involved and that allows anyone ahead of them to pull away. We'll see if that's true this yeah. time. Patrick Long is widening his gap.
That's one of the better battles on track between those two cars. The Lotus 26R, 37 of Malone, and the Lotus Elan 185 of Devas Conchellas. As we were saying earlier, the 26R is officially the, the lightweight competition version, and I think there were 113 of them, something like that, and they, they sell for an enormous amount of money. You know, I mean, they don't come to market ever, and they're probably 175 grand. However, if you know what you're doing, and you get an ordering coup, then you've got a good engine builder, and you've actually figured out what went into the competition car, you can build your own, and you can come up with something that's just as fast. And actually, that's what's going on here. Because the vast and sailor's car is not a 26R, but, you know, tell that to my love at this point. This is, this is a fierce race. A lot of changes. Yeah, looking down the list, it looks like Olga Reindloba has moved from ninth up to eighth in her Porsche 911. She's gotten around Laura Resende in the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Yeah, Olga's having a really good day. New second place car, 185, Dalmo de Vasconcellos has gotten around Malone, but Long is long gone at this point. Look at the gap, it's starting to open up. It may be that Malone was actually holding up to Vasconcellos. Don't forget, you know, we've seen, we've seen the Vasconcellos before, a lot of times, and he is fast. Huh? They are both very competent yeah. drivers in very fast cars. Morgan Ryan Loba now up to six spots in her Porsche 390. And wow. she's moving up through the field as well. She's having a really good day. She's having an excellent day. She started back at night. She's up to six. The next car for her to take on would be Bird in that Alpha. And that's a tall order. That's that Alpha GT we've been talking about. Well, one of the winningest Alphas around. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed it is. But Olga definitely getting with the program. Some smoke from somebody. I'm not sure if it's the 81 car. One of the four. Oh, yeah, it is the 81 car. Oh, uh, coming out of the back of that. This is not it looks good. like it's uh, motor may well be gone. Maybe. Hand in the air. Yep. Pulls off. Outside of five into the dirt before he oils it up. That's Ed Matsuishi of San Rafael in the 67 Porsche 911 SR. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for maybe he just blew an oil line or something. I mean, you could hope, right?
Yeah, some of the battles further back in the back with the Alpha Males and the Porsches are absolutely stunning. Yeah. Great stuff. You know, it would be fun. We've got four cars, two abreast down into the Andretti hairpin now. It, it would be fun to be out there in that, wouldn't it? I mean, that's one of the things you come to mind. I mean, what fun to have three other people to race with and basically pretty evenly matched. And enough laps to where you can start calculating where, if there is anywhere, you have an edge. Yeah, that's, uh, that's where she got off the track fast, pretty much as soon as we well, thought. I, I, I saw a puff of smoke come out of the car, and I wasn't sure it was his car. Then it was more smoke and more of it, and I knew which car it was. And he was very aware of what was going on, pulled over the driver's right out of the racing line, held his hand up in the air to let everybody behind yeah. him know that he was slowing and had an issue. Probably other... Uh, Gage dropped to zero, or, uh, the, or there was a flashing red light right in front of it. Not like the three amigos you talked about this morning. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it uh, that looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, Dick observed that uh, Patrick Long just turned his fastest lap, so I, I think he can probably hear footsteps. And your race leader, Patrick Long, gets the one lap sign. We are on our final lap. Long in the Porsche 911 ZR has led it from the green flag. Malone in the 26R has gotten back around Dalmo de Vasconcellos. So this is the battle between the two Lotuses, and it's going to go all the way down to the finish. Malone second now in 37, the 26R. De Vasconcellos third in 185, the Elan. Fourth is Kazmarowski in that Janetta G4 car 199. 
left, and it's Bird in the Alpha, 162. That's the top five as they begin the last lap. headlights on but only one light is on the right side as he takes the checkered flag for the win and Malone takes second in the Lotus 26R number 37 the Vasconcellos third in the Elan 185 Kaczorowski the Janetta fourth 199 